It's the Mustang Insider Show presented by Cal Portland, the largest building materials company of cement and construction material products on the West Coast. Now, here's Chris Sylvester, the voice of the Mustangs. We welcome you to another edition of the Cal Poly Mustang Insider powered by Cal Portland right around the corner. In fact, less than 48 hours from now, Cal Poly baseball opens up a highly anticipated 2022 campaign. Washington first, then Fresno State. It's a four-game homestand to open up the new season. I'm joined by Cal Poly head coach Larry Lee and Cal Poly starting shortstop, the reigning Big West player of the year, Brooks Lee. Guys, thanks so much for hopping on with me. I know there's a lot of buzz around this 2022 season uh, with the strong finish in 2021 and, and some of the additions you guys made this offseason. But uh, for you guys, uh, you know, it's been a, a long offseason for everybody else who maybe has their attention tor turned towards football, basketball. Maybe they're just starting to think about baseball. So how nice is it to finally almost be to the start of the 56 game schedule? Well, it's great. It's, you know, you, it, the, the off season seems like it gets longer and longer. You know, you, you have summer, fall, uh, January and half of February to get ready for a three and a half, four month season. So yeah, we're looking forward to it and, and uh, looking forward to playing some outside competition to see kind of have a measuring stick and see what our, 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 you know, our strengths and our weaknesses are. So we're looking forward to, it. and we actually have a couple of more games this year. We have 58 games on our, our schedule because uh, when you go to Hawaii, you, you get free three extra games. Uh, and so we actually had 59 and then we had a cancellation. So we're at 58 and just looking forward to it. Brooks, I'm sure coming off your first full college season, I know you guys didn't finish in the standings where you wanted to last season, but uh, this, this has to be a really exciting year for you. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking forward to get right back to it. So this is the best time of the year for me and, the best time of my life. So I'm um, just looking forward to try to get back in the swing of things. And um, I can't wait to get back out there. Hey coach, I want to talk about your starting rotation uh, and you'll be battle tested off the bat. I know you went to Washington a few years ago up in Seattle and they kind of had you guys up in the Pacific Northwest, but getting to open the season against a PAC 12 team that feels like they can make some noise in their conference and perhaps beyond a Washington program that has reached new heights in the last four or five years under their regime. Uh, what does that tell you about your program, the, the results that you'll see the first weekend? And obviously, Drew Thorpe has, has become a premier Friday night guy here on the West Coast, but Travis Weston ate up a lot of innings for you last year. And I know you're rolling with Caden Sheedy on Sunday. I mean, he showed you uh, some of his ceiling last season towards the end. Yeah, you know, you never really know how your team's going to respond until the lights go on for real. So, uh, you know, University of Washington's just a, uh, a few years removed from making a College World Series uh, appearance. And so they struggled a little bit last year and they have a lot of new players. They brought in uh, quite a few players uh, on the roster with junior college uh, transfers and then portal transfers. So, uh, you know, we feel good about um, the top part of our uh, you know, weekend rotation with, with uh, Thorpe and, and uh, Weston. They have a lot of experience. They were a Friday and Saturday guys last year. And then Sheedy towards the end got a couple of starts and had one really impressive start at, at Davis. So uh, important for all of them to, you know, go pretty deep into a, a ball game and allow us to use uh, our, our main bullpen guys, which would be uh, – Kyle Scott and Dylan Villalobos and we're trying to get some more of those bullpen guys into the mix so we'll see I mean when, once you play a, a weekend uh, to start the season then you can reassess where you are and and you, you see what players really rise to the occasion what, which players maybe are are still a little bit uh, away from where they need to be to compete at this level but you know we're looking forward to it and it'll give us a, a it's a small sample size after this weekend, but it's, it's necessary for us to make the, the right decisions going forward. Brooks, coming off your Big West Player of the Year season in 2021, I'm, I'm sure in the back of your head you knew that a lot of these preseason honors would be rolling in. And I know you've kind of dealt with the spotlight now for three or four years, but how do you kind of drown that out as you get ready uh, to have this season and keep all the focus on Cal Poly and, and hopes of getting back to a regional? 
Um, yeah, I mean, it's not really about me. It's about uh, how the team does. So um, no matter how you do in a weekend personally, uh, it just depends on what you did to um, help the team win. And uh, winning takes care of everything else. So, um, I mean, I just always feel like uh, I can do better than I did the year before. And so uh, it's about repeating, um, but just getting a little bit better in my facets uh, of my game and, and then ultimately um, having a better team success. Larry Lee Brooks, Lee, my guests on the Mustang Insider, Cal Poly Baseball. Early chance to see the Mustangs if you're on the Central Coast Friday through Sunday. Washington's here, then a good midweek matchup against Fresno State before they hit the road to Missouri State uh, to close out the month of February. Coach Lee, I know you, you made mention when UC San Diego, CSU Bakersfield joined the conference that six more conference games takes away from a couple RPI boosting potential weekends for you guys. But, but you have a lot of talent, it, it seems, to top the Big West this season. Two teams in the top 25, Irvine, Long Beach State. Santa Barbara has had a lot of success in recent memory. You can never forget about Cal State Fullerton under a new regime. Where, how strong do you think this conference is in 2022? Uh, I think it's getting stronger. I think uh, the teams you mentioned are you know, reloaded and, and will be as good as ever. I think we're hoping that we can you know, Cal Poly can get added into the mix like in the past. And, and hopefully, you know, somebody doesn't run away with it. And hopefully we get back to the Big West, you know, getting three berths, or, you know, and not just having a single berth, but having two, three. And, you know, the days of three and four, that was pretty common with the Big West. And um, it's just, you know, it's, it's been more and more difficult for teams out West outside of the pack to get, you know, multiple bids. But uh, that's why it's so important to get off to a good start. And, and you know, in the last few years, we haven't. We've, we've struggled early, and then we kind of turn it on. Uh, so we have to have a good non-conference uh, record to go along with our, our Big West conference record. And, you know, there's only one automatic, so that, that's what you're shooting for. And you have 30 conference games, which is a, an awful lot. But uh, usually the best team, you know, will, will uh, you know, win it with that many conference games. So... Tuesday games are important. Uh, Non-conference series are important. And then obviously the, the Big West Conference games are important. Brooks, co coming off the season you put together in 2021, you did a lot right. But for, for you as an individual, what did you aspire to improve upon from last season to this upcoming season? Um, leadership. So that's always a thing that you can constantly work on because uh, there's a lot of different experiences that I had last year and uh, I think I could treat them a little differently this year. And then um, from a game standpoint, um, probably just uh, hitting from both sides and being ready from pitch one uh, at the plate. And then defensively is uh, uh, a work in progress always. So um, no matter what, I'm constantly working at it, no matter how good I am. As a question for both of you guys, and I'll let Brooks go first here, but let's not forget, I mean, and fingers crossed here because it's been ever changing, but this might be the first normal season that we've had. I know you guys avoided any cancellations or postponements last year, but you played much of the first half of that season with, with empty stadiums. Baggett was empty. It was an eerie type of feel. You had UCLA come in for that three-game series, but it never really felt uh, like the atmosphere that Baggett usually gives you guys uh, an edge as a home team. But to hopefully have a season where – you have fans there from wire to wire. You avoid any of the COVID-related pauses, cancellations. I mean, how nice is that going to be to have that, hopefully, all of 2022? Uh, I mean, it's really uh, – it's everything. So being able to hear the fans and uh, kind of go through that process of getting used to uh, the sound and everything is a big deal. So um, I've been lucky enough to have a ton of experience here uh, for many years. So it's a little different for me personally, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a feeling like uh, nothing else. Skip. Yeah. You know, our fans are, are really good. You know, there's some electricity in the air you know, there's good programs up and down the West coast, but I think we're one of just a small handful of, of places that, you know, everybody looks forward to it and the fans get into it and it's loud and, you know, just secondhand, just hearing from the outside, uh, 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 outside of our, you know, domain here within the community, I hear a lot of, 
people really excited about our, our season started, which is great and gives them a chance to get out here, see some good baseball. And, and it's, it's something they really haven't been able to do for the last couple of years. So we're excited. I think our community is really excited and uh, it, you know, it's a lot to look forward to. Skip, who are some newcomers that Cal Poly baseball fans should get to know pretty quickly that might see a lot of time early in the season? Well, um, one of our, our freshmen, he's a freshman catcher that also plays some left field for us. Um, um, uh, Ryan Stafford from uh, Folsom High School. He's, he's a guy that is, is good, you know, from an offensive and defensive uh, standpoint behind the plate. But he swings the bat well, and what separates him from a lot of other freshmen, he's not scared. You know, he plays like a so he plays like he has a chip on his shoulder, and and he plays like a a, a junior. Um, one of our uh, six foot seven, six foot six right-handed pitcher, um, uh, Stephen Brooks uh, from Northern California. Uh, he's going to be really good in the future, and probably. You know, it was between he and Sheedy for our Sunday starting job. So Stephen will probably be our, our Tuesday starter. And I think he's got a, you know, real bright career ahead of him. He's got a down plane fastball, throw strikes, and, you know, his change up and slider, are, you know, developing. But uh, same thing. He, he's got kind of a he, – he's within himself. He's, he's very competitive. Uh, and then a couple of grad school transfer um, – who we got, we, we have uh, uh, Brett Borgonio, who uh, he was at three years at Cal State Fullerton and played his, his uh, redshirt junior year at Louisiana Lafayette. So he's in our grad school, uh, plays everywhere. He's a plus defender at second base, shortstop, third base, center field, and uh, trying to get him uh, into the lineups some, at some, some, some place. And right now it's like second base. and. I think he and Brooks really work well together. It's a, you know, with with York at first and Borgonio second and Brooks at shortstop, you got three elite infielders uh, on the infield. And then uh, one, an X factor is John Lagatuda played four years at, or, you know, with the COVID year, played four years at Cal, Cal Berkeley. He's, an, he's a grad school transfer. And so he's coming along quite well. He's in a, you know, left-handed hitting outfielder and, and, uh, we need all these guys, especially the guys that we we brought in to kind of step up to you know another level. Those those grad school guys or Borgonio and Lagatuda, they're they're developing as hitters uh, within the program, and uh, we're excited to see you know how they contribute from an offensive standpoint. Defense, you know, I know that they can play, and then I think Stafford and and uh, Stephen Brooks are two you know newcomers. Uh, we do have one kid. It's kind of a unique situation. Uh, Matthias uh, Haas, Haas, sorry. He's a he's kind of a redshirt uh, freshman. You know, he went to Brown out of high school. He's from Northern California and basically played one game. And, you know, it, it was a COVID year. It didn't count. So he has no real college experience and he's played some summer baseball. And he really, from day one, kind of blossom into a, a, a hitter and he's an infielder, but threw him out in the outfield to get a, a, another bat in the outfield. I think infield wise, we're, we're pretty set with maybe our, our four infielders and, and uh, having uh, Marin Khan's back, who's a, uh, you know, a, a, a quality second baseman, but felt we had to get some more bats in the outfield. Reagan Doss, you know, not a newcomer played here last year uh, has really blossomed as a, as an offensive and defensive player. And so we threw two catchers, uh, Stafford and Viegas right now, when one of them doesn't catch one of them plays left field and we're, you know, Haas will be playing right field along with Lagatuda. So kind of got kind of see how this early part of the season goes first week, second week, and then we'll kind of have a better idea what works best for our team to give us the best possible chance of winning. I hope Cal Poly fans were taking notes because last season you guys had a bevy of newcomers that wound up making an impact uh, from the portal. And I guess that's an aspect of recruiting for you, coach, that's changed over the years with a one-time transfer rule. Guys don't have to sit anymore. Joe York, Colin Viegas, Travis Weston, Reagan Doss, among other guys that transferred in before last season. That definitely helped you guys in 2021. Sounds like some of those names will help in 2022. 
I know the focus is on this season. I know the focus is on Cal Poly. I know you guys probably get so many father-son questions, but this more than likely the last go around. I'll start with Brooks. I mean, do you cherish these moments a little bit more than maybe you did the last couple seasons? Yeah, I mean, uh, having that time taken away my freshman year, being on the field um, is something that I can never get back. So I'm um, just trying to enjoy every single moment I have. And uh, it's less about the success. It's more about uh, the experience I've had playing for my dad. Um, and that's the biggest thing I'll take away from going to Cal Poly. What about you, Coach? Yeah, it's been great. It's been special. And the same thing, you know, you feel kind of cheated that uh, COVID year with the, the knee injury and then the, the season being shut down. Last year was great. I just, I just try to take advantage of every day in a game situation, practice situation on the field to try to help Brooks along with, you know, on a daily basis to try to make him the best possible baseball player he can be. And just kind of listening to him and, in, in, um, you know, when we sit down in a room of coaches and he's there or, or with a team and, and he's talking about certain things, like he makes everybody around him smarter. He's, he, he makes me smarter. He has, he's very, elite he's very old in in the way he thinks about the game and he's very instinctual but he really understands uh just a lot of different things you know hitting mechanics pitching mechanics defensive mechanics and you know when when he speaks you know even i pay attention and, and learn from him so it's it's been great he's he's 25 or 30 years uh ahead of where i was at, at his age so it's um it's been great. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's been a long process, you know, started many, many years ago and, and, uh, we'll just keep on working at this and, until, uh, one day they, they tell him that he's, he's no longer able to play. And, and you'll never forget his first at bat in a Cal Poly uniform because you, you weren't managing that game. There was a, a scenario earlier in that week in 2020 where a couple of fastballs got away from your pitchers and, Somehow, some way, you wound up getting ejected from the game, and therefore, as the rules went, suspended the next game. So, so where did you actually catch Brooks's first college at bat two years ago? Uh, someplace where I wasn't supposed to be. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll keep it at that. Okay. But yeah, I saw it from a distance, and uh, and then lucky to be there two days later for his second in in you know, and final at bat of that 2020 season. Yeah, that was, that was, yeah, a, that, that was a cool moment because, you know, he was still kind of on, on one leg and, uh, um, you know, had a, you know, adjusted his plan at the plate and got something that, that he was looking for and he wanted. And, and uh, that was, that was cool. And then, then it was, you know, he really utilized uh, that time off to get in the weight room and really get his, his D back to hundred percent. And then, he used the that summer to basically like the our spring and you know went out and had a great summer and so yeah I think it's you know, he, he Brooks said it last year at some point in the season uh, probably towards you know after the the you know the the last half of the season he he, he made a comment to me he says hey I'm I'm right where I should be so and that that means a lot of different things you know it it was you know being at Cal Poly and then just his his game itself was right where it should be. He, he, could, he understood, you know, where he was on his path to being as, as good as he can be. And he, he also understands that this game is so difficult that you just, you are never satisfied and you just keep, keep working, uh, working on your deficiencies. So hopefully one day they, they become part of your strengths. And, and he understands too, it's a, you know, it's a big world. You're competing against the rest of the world at the next level. So uh, it's good. I'm proud of him. And, and it's, 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 uh, I'm very lucky to be able to, you know, he, he, uh, to play in front of us, but me, talking about, you know, my wife and, and my daughter and they, you know, they are excited also. And they're real, uh, you know, they're just happy to watch him, you know, able to play. Well said, Skip, and might we add that Brooks' first Cal Poly hit was a double, and of course he went on to set the single-season doubles record in 2021. Looks like the lights are turning out, so we got to wrap up. But uh, last thing for both of you guys, 
Cal Poly gets back to a regional in 2022. If fill the blank for me, I'll start with you, Brooks. Um, if we can pitch and play defense. Uh, uh, we really swing the bat and we have to uh, pitch out of the bullpen. All right. So it sounds like pitching is going to be key for this 2022 group. Got to feel good with Drew Thorpe on Fridays, Travis Weston, an innings eater on Saturdays. And uh, Caden Sheedy showed a lot of upside at times in 2021. He'll get the starting nod on Sunday. Guys, thanks so much for your time. Really looking forward to an exciting 2022 season. And uh, I'll see you guys in Springfield, but the rest of everybody else will see you guys this weekend at Baggate. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. All right. Pretty cool to hear from a great Cal Poly baseball duo. As always, this podcast made possible by AM Sun Solar. If you're worried about rising PG and E rates, go solar, pay less on your monthly bills, seamless installs, custom financing solutions. The experts at AM Sun Solar do it all. AM Sun Solar, your local solar experts. Visit them at amsunsolar.com. Podcast also brought to you by Dignity Health, offering all star treatment you can trust. Learn more about healthcare services. Visit dignityhealth.org slash Central Coast. Should be a fun baseball season for Cal Poly and the Mustangs. So get it started on Friday. Washington out of the Pac 12. The Dogs come to town for a big three game non conference series. We'll talk to you then on the Mustang Insider from Cal Portland. This has been the Mustang Insider Show presented by Cal Portland with a commitment to environmental leadership that has made the organization stronger and is the primary choice of contractors. The Mustang Insider Show. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Cal Poly Sports Network.